Welcome on into the Prowl Podcast. This is Chris Wilcox, joined today by Rocco Borg. Rocco is a second-year varsity coach for the wrestling program uh, here at Carroll. And uh, Rocco, tell me a little bit about your past and kind of how you got to where you're at right now. Thanks for having me on, Chris. But um, yeah, my name is Rocco Borg. I'm a wrestling coach here in Carroll. It's my second year. Um, my wrestling past, I started wrestling when I was about like third or fourth grade. I Luckily, grew up in a really big wrestling town in Oxford, Michigan, and um, I never was really good till about just before high school. And we had really good coaches, and uh, we had two or three Division One coaches working out with us from sixth grade to high school. And we had a hundred, I think, thirty kids in our youth program, so we got a lot of experience and a lot of guys to bounce off with. And it was really good culture, so we worked our way up and. I was all state four year all my four years in high school and we won a state title my sophomore year, runner up my junior year and the top four my senior year. And then no, sorry, we got upset my senior year we got upset and uh we didn't get top four. But um yeah, we had incredible experiences because we had incredible coaches and then I went on to wrestle at Eastern Michigan and wrestled there for three years and yeah, I just was blessed with the opportunity to wrestle with really good people and my coaches and uh that's why i coach now is just to uh, be able to give back like they did to me and take a kid who wasn't the best athlete and just give him the right mentality and get him pretty far in life so that's kind of why i'm coaching now so. well you you pointed out a couple of things there that i kind of want to actually circle back on and we'll circle back on them how we get to them but uh you know the coaching standpoint obviously you said you had coaches uh that were kind of maybe exceptional individuals for you while you were growing up what kind of characteristics uh, did they have that you see implementing yourself right now as a high school coach? Yeah, so I still had my three high school coaches that I had, I still talk to every week. Um, they're like my second dads. They are, they were there for thick and thin and believed in me when no one else did. And um, they just were, the biggest thing is this, they were consistent, man. They were just, they were always there. Like I never had to, I've never, never, ever not seen them at practice. They were always there. And uh, that's my goal is just to be consistent with the kids I coach and from elementary to high school and just give them the opportunity and just always be there. Every time, thick and thin, seventh grade, and I was getting my butt kicked and uh, they were there working out with me and making me better and making sure I was always getting the best competition too. So when I started getting good, they would take me all across the state, all across the country and just make sure that we were getting the best, the best practice essentially. And most importantly, too, they're just really good people. So, like, I just learned the most basic things, like the win with fashion and all that. Like, I never forget in eighth grade, I won a big match, and um, I kind of showed at the end, and my mom and the coach pulled me off by the year after the match and sat me, took me out of the tournament and told me, about, yeah, it's a big win, but more importantly, it's about winning the right way and doing all that. And those little things I'll never forget, and hopefully I can put that to help take that to my kids here and make them better and hopefully we can get to the point where we can start winning consistently and uh, have a good solid program like you used to back in the day. So you had the opportunity to coach against your former team last year. Mm-hmm. Um, tell me a little bit about that, kind of the emotions that uh, were maybe present that night, so on and so forth. Yeah, that was the cool. Uh, we did a tape near honor duel, coolest thing. That was so awesome. So thankful for Oxford for letting us do that and Thank you for letting our boys compete. Our boys had so much fun. They, they took us down. were so hospitable to us. They We got down two hours early. They let us play in the – it's a legacy center there, so it's a really cool setup. It was sold out. They did a really cool thing in the back center so the parents could go get alcohol too and get food. There's a whole display area, and our kids get to warm up for everybody, a bunch of loud music, or like intros coming in. Even we got the middle school schoolers involved. It's just such a unique environment that our kids, middle school and high school, have never experienced before. They've never been in like a crazy environment, and to be able to expose them to that was so cool. They loved it, and we got we got shut out to a really good Oxford team, but I was so impressed by how our guys performed. Like we pretty much we had a full team last year and had a winning record, and almost all our kids are great. And that, like to me, that is un- unbelievable. If they would have asked me two years ago if we would have a winning team, I would think, I would guess it'd take six to seven years. And somehow they pushed through and getting better. But to have to have that experience in Oxford that let us do that, we had this big dinner afterwards, let us eat, and got to all the Carol kids got to hang out with the Oxford kids and made a lot of friends throughout the way. And to be able to honor Tate Mir too, that was the coolest thing ever. And Mr. Mir Buck, his dad, and Trent. They give a big speech before and after and talk to the Carroll boys, and they love that. was such a cool experience, and it means a lot to us, too. Uh, we're really close to the mirrors. Uh, our brother graduated with two older ones, and 
We had a brother coach, then Ross Swinger, the head coach for Oxford, was like his mentor and making him so good. And so we, when I came back from Iowa, and I helped coach with Ross, he's, run, he's turning Oxford around back to where we were. And he uh, had me tam- train with Tate every day. So we got really close to Tate and all that. And he was on the verge of becoming a state champ as a junior and a stud football athlete. And then that horrible incident happened. But for Oxford to let us do that and be able to be a part of a really special night, that meant a lot to us. And our boys loved it. And... I hope we can do that again. So. Well, you talk about the team that uh, you you know you you call green. Uh, tell me a little bit about last season because it just seems like to me, you know, as you stated, you know, it's going to take maybe six, seven years for a program to kind of come around to really be super successful. But here you are in your in your second year, really kind of already turning the corner on a, on a lot of things. So tell me kind of where you can you can attest a lot of that too. So. Yeah, going into last year, like our first year, we only had, we had one returning wrestler. So we had four kids in our team compete. So it was tough. But those four kids, like Todd Bailey, Trey Slazak, and all of them, and Blaine Ferris, like I am so impressed by them to come on a team that has just four kids that lose every single duel. We get our butt kicked. And to come back every single week is the toughest thing I've ever seen. Like, and I was so ignorant coming in because I was lucky enough, I've never been on a losing team. So for them to be able to stick it out and get through that year, like that, they taught me so much in that year, like how tough some kids be, even though they're not on a winning team. Like I knew right away, like if these kids stick around, they could be good. And so by that next year, second year, we, I'm like, I'm just hoping to have half a roster because we have a third, there's 14 weight classes and I'm hoping to fill half of it. We had weigh-in days because you have to do alpha weigh-ins before the season to let you know how well each kid can get in their weight. We had 30 kids come in, like your kid. And I could, I could not believe it was just tickled pink and, so pumped and wrestling has a high attrition rate too just because it's very physical it's demanding it's a lot and by the end of the season we had 22 kids i i couldn't have been happier with that so we had a full lineup i think we were 22 and 14 which i was i was blown away by like that just made my heart melt and they worked so hard we won so many close matches and duels by like coming down to last first year wrestlers like doug carson getting a win to win the duel at home john ramirez won some good matches todd bailey always getting the big stick Trace Lazak doing some wins and Blaine being Blaine and getting a big clutch moments and couldn't be happier with those guys and like especially like other stories too like Blake Sides more coming back two years ago and Chase Laswicky like throughout the season they lost both of them lost 60 pounds like that that changed your life forever and I'm just so proud of them they went from being pretty heavy to now they're in great shape and their lives have changed forever and they just those guys will always have my heart is like they're showing what Kira wrestling can be and I just hope that we can keep adding this every year and really build that program to what it should be. So you you mentioned earlier on here uh, in in the podcast about the youth side of things where you came from a youth level with 130-some kids yeah. in the youth level. What's it like now here in Carroll? You know, obviously those numbers aren't as high, I don't, I don't think, but, you know, tell me about the program. Uh, you also you also have a uh, the Wrangler set up as well. So tell me a little bit about that if you could. Yeah, absolutely. So that's their next step. So our middle school and high school numbers are there now. So our next step is the youth because the youth supplies the high school. And if you want to be good consistently in any MHSA sport, the youth is the ticket. So right last year, we had two different clubs. My club is the Wrangler Wrestling Club and the other club is the Carroll Growlers. So I started my own club called the Wrangler Wrestling Club. I We had some disagreements with the Growlers about how things were going and just the results weren't showing. And in my opinion, just the right wrong people were involved and if i'm going to be here i plan on being here for the long haul i just want to get things started on the right foot and just get it going because i think i know the right way to run it and this the, my big thing is just have the right people involved and make kids love the sport because from kindergarten to sixth grade no one cares about winning state championships it's about loving the sport we can make you good after that so i just want them to love the sport and be a part of our program so i formed Wrangler wrestling club and that did well so this summer we've had a lot of discussions with the school and we're going to go back to one club at the school. We're working things out on that right now. Some more details come later. But we will be running one club out of the school to make sure everyone funnels into that for this upcoming year, whether that be Wrangler or Growlers. We're working on that. We're getting the right people involved. So either way, it'll be the best possible scenario coming out of the high school. We'll let you know in like two weeks, and they'll be training. And right before the high school is up in the wrestling room, and feeling good to interact with our high schoolers too so they can feel part of a bigger community themselves too. So on the on the youth level and and with those high school kids, 
How many of these high school kids come down to mentor a lot of these youth, the youth level kids? Do you have any of them come so down? Right now, just one or two. My goal is to make it everybody. So that's that's the next step because that is how you get the kids to start coming out. So like our middle scores, we had we started off with thirty four and we got down to twenty nine, I think, last year for wrestling. And the reason we got those numbers is because we had those eighth and ninth graders start wrestling, and they pulled their friends from sixth to eighth grade, or the friends of their brothers. So. I realize how impactful that is. So my goal this year, that's our goal, is that every week, two to three high schoolers will be on a scheduled roster to come down and they have to run youth practice just to get them associated and get them build a part of the program. And then my goal is, too, we're having an assembly duel at the end versus Cass City, an in-school assembly, and we're going to have our, our youth wrestling team start off the, the duel and get that going and have a middle school wrestler go out there just to get everyone associated and on the same page and make it pretty fun for everybody and get the whole community to know who they are too. Well, this sounds like a, this sounds like a great event, uh, especially uh, to be put on against uh, a, a rivaling school at that. So um, you, you talk a little bit about the community. Tell me what kind of impact the community here in Carroll has had on you and what kind of impact you've had on the community so far. Yeah. So they, the, they've had a lot more impact and I've learned so much from this community because I, when I got up here, I moved up here two years ago, and I just knew, I just remember the Mahalics and the Nikowitzes just because I never met them. But I remember right when I started wrestling, I'll never forget, my dad wanted me to watch my first NCAA tournament. And so we were watching it, and I remember watching the whole thing, and this kid from Central's in the finals. And that, that does not happen. Like, NCAA finals, like you see a kid from Central Michigan, from Carroll, Michigan, is wrestling in the finals. And I'll never forget watching when Mahalik wrestled in the finals, and that was just the coolest thing. I like watching him and a couple of Michigan guys like that was, that just inspired me forever. So coming up here, I knew there's just so much legacy, like, and all that. And I was surprised where the wrestling program and fell to, but I mean, stuff happens is what it is. But meeting all these people in the Mahalics, the Nikowitzes, Jasters, all like this amazing people. I've been so blessed to have them be on my side and just help me with everything. Like every time I run a tournament, they're there before they get there before I do. They're helping out. They're doing all the stuff. They're calling all the people to help. They got the whole school involved. I've just been blown away by this immediate support, even from a program that wasn't showing results, especially the first year, like we weren't winning and that we still had everyone there to help. Like that's, that does, just doesn't happen. So like I knew right away, like this could be the community that we could change it. Like I mean, we get, we can be good sooner rather than later, just because of all the help we get. And it happens like weekly too, with people off, uh, we have patients come to the office talking about asking if they can help, how they can donate. And like this summer, just we did a two week donation thing to raise money for mats and they raised it. We got a new mat in a week. That's big. And we got new singlets. We got new everything in two weeks. It's like, I'm just blown away. Just like how much they've held and how much they want to see our kids get better. And I really do think Carroll's the perfect town to have a really good wrestling team. And like in all sports too, we have the athletes and I really do think our sports here are really turning the corner, especially our younger athletes got to do strength conditioning too. And just seeing from sixth grade to the 10th grade level, this the amount of buy-in is such a difference from the past two years. And it's so exciting to see. And we have so many parents too, are just are so bought in from the football, the basketball, wrestling, baseball, like they're just all bought in. And that's honestly what it takes. The bought in parents is what changes the program. It can really change the community. And I think they're, they're there now. And I'm pretty excited to have them along. And so I think they're the ones that steer us in the right direction. So. That's awesome. Uh, Rocco, Tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, you always hear this, hey, you know, if you're playing football, you should wrestle and, uh, you know, a little bit about that. I know there's truth to the backing. I'm not saying that there's not. Mm -hmm. What types of advantage can some of these football players that maybe don't wrestle see when they wrestle? For sure. So I, I, some football is my first love too. So I encourage all my athletes to, to play football, like all my wrestlers just, it's such a, those two sports do such hand in hand, especially because wrestling, football, because most of the guys, their football is number one for fair reason. Cause it's incredible culture, such a fun game, it's a team game, it's 11 guys, you're out there with your brothers in the Friday Night Lights and it's unforgettable memories. But for, I mean, for football, strip is the injury. Like you can, when we learn in wrestling, just level change and tackling, we do that every day, a hundred times a day. We, I'm, I'm a massive, if you want to be great at technique, great at anything, you need to do repetition, repetition, repetition. That's the only way to get good especially being in the division one college level that I learned that the only way to get good is do things by mastering them and to master something you do it thousands and thousands and thousands of times. So 
for football, just the tackling portion, football is based off tackling and blocking. And that's all it comes down to level changing, be able to penetrate your knee level just like wrestling does. So if you can tackle somebody, get low, stay with somebody, be tough and learn. And most importantly, like this happening in the NFL, like Tua, Tag, or Tua having him doing jujitsu and wrestling because he doesn't want to fall. It's like a lot of kids, if you don't want to fall, they put your arm weird, you tense up, you're going to get injured too. So that's a great thing, especially up on the mats, to learn how to roll through injuries, roll through falls, how to fall, how to tense up, how to move, and just be comfortable with being in that situation. Because I remember my first football game, I went like I was later, and I think it's my first tackle football game, sixth or seventh game. I was so nervous because so I was the last one to join. Everyone's been playing for five years, but it just felt so natural once I got out there because I've been I've been tackling people and rolling since I was in third grade. So it just was a it became natural, and I just don't tense up because that's when kids get hurt is when they feel uncomfortable, tense up, and that's when they roll an ankle, put an arm out, or tense up or get a stinger. Yeah. So when 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 we talk about, I mean, I'm talking about the football side, and, but on the wrestling side, um, you know, I'm just kind of talking maybe more to the guys at this point. But you got some girls out there too. Yeah. You got some girls that can wrestle. Tell me a little bit about them. It's been awesome. Yeah. I'm so I'm a massive. At first, I was I just like didn't see like the benefit in it, and it's so I'm I was so ignorant to it because I've seen how much girl wrestling grows guys too. It's like such a interesting dynamic. Like it's. The girl wrestling across the nation has made guy wrestling like twice as big, which I think is so cool. And we had a couple last year. Like we had Cadence Killing her. She didn't wrestle for us because she uh, did homeschooling, but she came and worked out. And she competed with the guy. She worked her ass off. And then uh, Kara Wright, eighth grader, she went from not winning a match to winning four matches in a day and dominate. Like, and that's amazing. She's only in eighth grade, and she has a chance to all state a couple times in high school, maybe won a state championship. And it's so fun having them in the room, too, because they change the dynamic. They make it harder. But they're just as tough, not tougher than the guys. Like they said, they kind of set the tone. They don't complain because they know they're like they're one. Of, there's two or three girls in the room, so they got to hold a high standard, and they do. They work their ass off. They train just as hard as any of the guys do. And I, I love coaching, which I never thought I'd say. It's just fun because like their spirits there. They want to be there just as much as all the guys do, and it's freaking awesome to be a part of it. And hopefully, we keep getting more, and we can kind of grow that legacy too. Well, we're just about getting ready to wrap this up, and. I want you to say one thing to the community for this coming year uh, as far as wrestling goes. Why should the community come out and support Carol Wrestling as a whole across the board and what makes what makes that backing so big for you guys? It's a good question. But um, I really think you should come out and support Carol Wrestling because how hard the guys have been working. We've had uh, off-season training nine weeks after season. We started it up again, so... These guys will have 14 weeks of training before season starts, and they've been working their tail off. I'm having 30 kids up in the summer workouts, the weightlifting every morning, and I think we should have another full team this year, and hopefully we can have a second team too. We're on track to maybe have two teams, and we're we're going to load up the schedule this year. So we're, I, wanna, I don't want to just for some teams. We're going to be wrestling all of the state and be versing some top teams and really cool experiences. And I really think you come out watch the boys. I think they're going to come tear it up, and our girls too, of course, and – I think we're having a little different mentality on the mat. We bring some of the old style wrestling back into it, some of that hustle. And I really hope you can make it out and see the improvement because I think it's just going to keep getting better from here. We have a bunch bunch of freshman horses that are coming and take the reins, and I'm pretty excited to see what they can do. Well, you definitely got a big future in front of you as as a coach here at Carroll. So, Rocco, hey, I want to thank you for your time once again. Uh, thank, and thank you for taking time out of your day for the interview, and uh, good luck on the upcoming season. Thanks, Chris. Really appreciate having me on.